What is up guys? Hello and welcome back to another video on this channel. It's been a while. I was actually working pretty hard in the last couple of weeks because we currently have peak season in my actual job. So there were a lot of projects I needed to take care about first before I could just jump straight back into game dev. But anyways, today we will of course continue to build our endless runner in Unity and we will add some cool new features to the game. First let's take a look at the actual gameplay before we start implementing this episode's changes. The game is looking and feeling good so far, I'm pretty satisfied with the progress we made. But as you see right here, when I hit an enemy on purpose, our player is basically standing still, like he doesn't even care. So we are going to change that in today's episode. We will create ourselves some cool looking death animation which we can use when we hit enemies or even fatal obstacles. And to do that we will use ragdoll physics which will be a lot of fun to play around with. Before we jump straight into the game, guys if you enjoy my content and want to see more of it, please consider subscribing and also drop a like if you like this video. Please also share your opinions and ideas in the comments and also let me know if you have any questions. Alright, enough talking, let's jump straight into Unity and let's get going. First we need to set up our ragdoll. It basically just consists of a few objects which um, have rigid bodies and colliders on it and which are connected by character joints. That means you can implement ragdoll physics to nearly any object regardless whether it's a humanoid or not if you just add and set up the components mentioned. But to make life a little bit easier Unity has a nice little wizard integrated for setting up human ragdolls. Now our dog is no human which means it won't work right out the box but its model is rigged and the dog skeleton isn't that much different. It's basically like a human walking on his knees or something like that. So we will use the wizard and then we will have to make a few adjustments to make it work properly. Alright so first let's take a look at our player model and let's see where we can find the rig. I think this um, deformation system object is a good entry point. Okay root m seems to be the root bone of this rig. So I just right click on the deformation system object and select 3d object and then ragdoll. That brings up our ragdoll wizard. Now you see we have some slots for different bones we need to drag in. All the wizard does is adding the needed components to the specified objects. Again it's just a character joint, a rigid body and a collider. The wizard helps us to set this up real fast but we also could do it manually if we want to. And we can also edit this later on if something doesn't work out or we just need to play around a little bit with the components. Now every rig is a little bit different and names of the body parts and bones can vary but I guess um, we will figure it out soon. First let's find ourselves um, the pelvis. To make searching around a little bit easier we can just um, right click right here on my root bone and then just hit select children. This will open up all subfolders and I have a clearer overview on what I can work with. As you see the names are slightly different from the ones in the wizard but you can get an idea on what is needed. So let's just drag in our root bone for the pelvis, back hip left for the left hip and back hip right for the right hip. Now we also need knees and foot so um, for the foot I just take um, the ankle since the dog foots are basically pretty small and not that relevant for the ragdoll. We just need the bones where it needs to be able to bend if that makes sense. We also can customize this later on if we need so don't worry. I do the same thing for the right side. Okay now let's move on to the upper body part. Let's start with the head because I see it right away. Okay and now let's see what we have here. Um, there is the knee so let's drag that in and I just use the front hip for our arms because it's sh it should be basically the same. Now um, let's do that for the right side as well and all that's left is the middle spine. Hmm. Let's just go with spine 1 part 1 for now and let's see how it turns out. Now we have basically assigned all needed bones. Okay the total mass also seems reasonable for our dog. Unity will basically spread the mass for us through the different body parts like uh, it's common in the human body. But I guess we were fine with the dog as well. Alright so now let's take a look at our gameplay. But first let's disable enemy spawning. And let's also get rid of the always run feature so that we can test it out a little bit easier. Okay as you can see now it's behaving a little bit weird because our ragdoll basically conflicts with our character controller and also our animator. So let's go back to our player object and let's disable everything which is not needed to test our ragdoll. And now let's check it out again. Alright as you see it kind of works like intended but as you also see um, we ha are having a little bit of trouble with our colliders. Some of our dog's limbs and also his head is sinking to the ground when we fall. And like mentioned since our model is not humanoid the wizard won't work right out the box and we need to make a few adjustments especially to the colliders. 
Also, our player is not in T-Pose, which makes it even harder, but we will take care of this right now. Um, regarding the pose, what bothers me the most, to be honest, is that his head is straight, so let's quickly fix that first. For that, let's just take a look at the transform uh, for the different neck and head bones. Yeah, I guess we need to reset some coordinates for the X and Y rotation, so let me do that real quick. Alright, much better. So now let's have a look at the colliders, which was generated by the Unity Ragdoll wizard. If you don't exactly remember which bones you assigned, you can just type in collider into the search field in the project hierarchy and it will select all game objects with uh, colliders attached. Alright, now, if you select the root object here, it will show the colliders inside the child object as well. Okay, as you see it's not quite optimal, so let's um, fix that real quick. Again, there's no need to be 100% accurate and when setting this up by yourself manually and not using the wizard, you don't have to work on every single bone. Just enough character joints so that the model can kind of bend in a realistic way. Okay, now first let's uh, start by setting up the head properly. If we take a look at our gameplay, we see that it kind of sinks into the ground. If we take a look at the collider of our head object, we can see that it's a little bit too small. So, I just need to change the size and maybe the position so that uh, it fits our model's head. For that I just go to the Collider component and hit the Edit Collider button. Now we can just drag around the collider and change its size until it kind of fits the head of our model. Again, it doesn't have to be super accurate. Okay, I think that's fine. So now let's check out our game real quick. Yeah, as you see, our head isn't glitching to the ground anymore, uh, thanks to the properly set up collider. And it's basically the same thing we need to do for the other body parts to make it behave like intended. Nothing too fancy, just setting up the collider so that they cover the body parts of our dog properly. To not bore you, I will quickly take care of the rest of the body parts and put you on fast forward real quick. Alright, done. So let's see what we got. As you see it's much better right now, of course we can optimize this even more when we have the time, but it will do for now. But what I still don't like is that the tail is um, still glitching through the ground. The reason for that is that the Unity Ragdoll system hasn't created the needed components for the tail, since it's meant for humanoid characters and the human doesn't usually have a tail. At least not at the back side of his body. But it's no problem at all, this way I can at least show you guys how to set up the components manually, it's really not that big of a deal. I will just create it so that the bone consists of just one piece. Um, you of course could create the component for each and every single piece of the tail so that it bends more realistically, but for our purpose I'll be fine with just using one piece. So first, I need to identify what object I want to use to place my components, and that of course, like mentioned, uh, pretty much depends on where you want it to be able to bend. So I'll go with the first one, which means uh, it will bend right at the start of his tail. Now, we will need three components to make it work. A character joint, a rigid body and a collider. I will go with a capsule collider, I guess. Um, I just hit the add component button and let's type in joint. And I select the character joint. As you see it automatically also added ourselves a rigid body component. That's because the character joint needs the rigid body to function properly. Now what we need to do in our character joint component is to select our connected body. We will need to set it to the object containing the joint, what's next higher in our hierarchy, or the parent if you will. I'll just go with the spine we already set up. Alright, last but not least, we also need to add a collider. Like mentioned, I just go with the capsule collider. And now let's set up the size properly. Okay, and that is it for setting up the rectal part for our tail. Let's now take a look at our gameplay again and let's see what it does. As you can see it's working just fine right now. Of course we could have added at least one additional joint to the tail so that it kind of bends. But I guess uh, for the current state of the game we're perfectly fine. Of course we can always come back and do some optimization when we feel it's needed to improve the overall experience. But for now I think we're good to go. Now of course we just want our ragdoll to be active when certain events happen, like for example when we hit an enemy. And otherwise we need our components to be deactivated because as you might remember it kind of conflicts with our character controller. So let's take care of that next and let's write some code to handle that. For this I create a new script and I just call it um, player ragdoll. Now let's open up our new script in Visual Studio. First we need ourselves some references. The main responsibility of this class is to basically toggle on and off the components needed for the ragdoll and also the components which are in conflict with the ragdoll. So first we of course need a list of our colliders used for the ragdoll. I use an array right now. 
And of course we will also need an area of the rigid bodies. I will leave the character joints be because without the rigid bodies they won't work anyways. And of course we also need a reference to every component of the character controller so that we can basically deactivate it when ragdoll mode is toggled on and um, the opposite. That would first be our rigid body. Then let's get our capsule collider used for handling the movement. The animator. And also the animation control script. And also we will need the rest of the scripts used for controlling the character movement as well. Also to make life a little bit easier I create a public variable for my ragdoll root object. You'll see in a minute for what I need that. Alright now let's move on to our start method. First let's use the get component method to pull all our character controller components. Alright, so far so good. Now, besides the getComponent method, there's also a getComponentsInChildren method. Here it is important to use the plural form. There is a singular one as well, so we will use the getComponentsInChildren method. This is the right one. And now we will use it to grab ourselves all the colliders from our ragdoll root object. And also the rigid bodies as well. Okay, great. Now let's create ourselves a new method. And let's just call it set ragdoll state. And let's use a boolean as a parameter and let's call it state. Alright, so basically to enable our ragdoll mode we just need to call this method with the parameter true. And to disable it we need to call it with false. First what we need to do in this method is to set the state of our character controller components. Because we are lazy we just copy them over from the start method. Now, to enable and disable stuff, we just need to use the enabled property. Um, of course, with the exception of a rigid body, where we just set is kinematic to toggle on and off physics. Now, if you want to enable ragdoll mode, we will call the method and hand over the parameter true. So in that case, what we need to do is to set our character controller components to enabled equals false. We can achieve that if we just use the exclamation mark before our state to negate our boolean. And of course, in case of our rigid body, we need to do it the other way around because is kinematic true would mean it is basically disabled. Okay, so far so good. Now let's take care of our ragdoll components and let's start with our colliders. Since we have an array, we can simply use it for each loop to iterate through every single one of the colliders. And for this we also use the enable property and we set it to state. So if our method gets called with uh, true to enable our ragdoll, this will also get set to enable equals true. And we do the same thing for our rigid bodies. Except here we are using is kinematic and we set it to exclamation mark state to negate it. Alright, that's basically it for this method. Okay, now let's head back to our start method and of course we need to disable our ragdoll initially. So let's just call our set ragdoll state method and set it to false. Okay, done. That is it for the ragdoll script. Now let's switch back to Unity. Of course, now what we need to do is to drag our script onto the player object in the inspector. And um, we also need to set the ragdoll root. I just use the main object right here and uh, pull it from the hierarchy right into the slot in the inspector. Okay, now let's open up our player collision controller script. As you might remember, this script is responsible for handling player collisions and therefore also responsible for deciding uh, when to toggle on the ragdoll mode. What we need first is a reference to a ragdoll script, of course. And we just go to our start method and use the get component method to pull it. So far so good. Now let's go to our onCollision enter method where we handle enemy collision. As you see right here, when we hit an enemy, um, we are basically disabling player movement by setting the movement speed to zero and we are also turning its kinematic to true in our rigid body. Those two lines won't be needed anymore because our ragdoll script will take care of that for us anyways. So let's just delete those. 
Now what we want to do is to enable Ragdoll mode right after instantiating our enemy hit particle. So we just type in player Ragdoll and then call the set Ragdoll state method and hand over true to enable Ragdoll mode. And this is basically it guys. Now let's head back to Unity and let's test it out real quick. Oh, um, I forgot, of course, we need to enable enemies again first. Um, there we go. So now let's find ourselves some nasty coronavirus, which is willing to kill us. All right, nice, it works. Um, looking great so far. Let's try it again. There we go, I feel like that adds a lot to the game. Also this ragdoll script we just created will not only get used when we get hit by an enemy, it will act as some kind of a base mechanic when we get hit in general, for example if you run into an obstacle. But of course I will differentiate between fatal hits and hits where our dog just gets staggered a little bit. But we will come to that in one of the next episodes. And this is basically it for today's episode guys. If you enjoyed this video please drop a like and also consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more Unity devlogs and tutorials. Please also share your feedback and questions in the comments. I really appreciate your support and your participation on this project very much. See you in the next video guys. Take care. Bye bye.